Hi everyone, I'm out on a ride today. I just got reminded that it's magpie season by getting swooped and made me think about what the magpie is thinking about as it's tracking me and it's coming in on its approach. And I thought I'd make a video about tracking, moving and maneuvering targets. So let's look at that topic in a bit more detail, starting with the model and, uh, and then looking at how the tracking algorithm works. So let's start with an example of a maneuvering target, perhaps an aeroplane or a ship. And it's following this path that I've drawn here. I'm showing here an X1 direction and an X2 direction. And what I'm showing with the dots is the location of the target when the radar pulse hits it. So a radar emits re regular pulses and cycles around in a an angular direction and each time the pulse is sent in the direction of this target it illuminates the target and that's what I'm showing with these dots. So these are the actual locations. So now let's think about a model for this and it helps us to define a state. So we're going to define this state vector which includes the x1 position, the x2 position and the velocity in the x1 direction and the velocity in the x2 direction. So this is what we call a state for the location of the target, the actual location. Of course, in radar, you don't know the actual location. That is exactly what you're trying to estimate or track. So let's think about that. Well, the radar is going to get not exactly these locations. It's going to see a scaled version of those locations plus noise, because it's a noisy radar system. So this is what we're measuring, YK. And the task from the, is to, from those measurements, to estimate the locations of X or track them because that location is moving over time. And so a model for this might be this, where at each of the locations when the radar hits the target, uh, the, we've got the current state, which again is the X1 and X2 positions and their velocities. And we multiply that by a matrix F uh, and then uh, to get the new location. And we've got this maneuvering target component uh, plus some system noise. So this is the measurement noise and this is what we call system noise. So let's think of an example for a minute when there's no system noise and when there's no maneuvers. Well, here is a classic example of moving in a straight line. So this matrix F here, if this had this form here, then you can see it's gonna result in moving in a straight line. Why is that? Well, because the at time K plus one, the next X1 location is gonna equal this row times the vector, which gives you the current location, because this is the X1 location at time K, and so one times that, nothing times that, plus alpha times the velocity in the X1 direction. And so the, this will, the new position for X1 will be the previous position at time K plus the velocity times the time between the scans. And the X2 will be the same. It will be one times X2 plus the velocity in the X2 times that time difference between the scans. So this, you can see that the X1 direction will be updated in a linear way based on the velocity and the X2 will be updated the same and the velocities in this example stay the same. So X1 velocity is this times this, which gives one times the current velocity in X1 and the same for X2. So this matrix, this choice of F, if you have this choice of F, this would correspond to a target that is moving exactly in a straight line. So this is hopefully gives you more intuition about this state space representation. Now, if you have noise in this, so the one that I've drawn here is not exactly going in a straight line, let's just consider it up to time six, for example, then this is because there is some system noise. So what I think we can uh, assume, or let's, let's model this, it's all about modeling uh, the, the movement. So a good model might be, if you think about up to time six, the good model might be with UK equals zero, no maneuvers happening and a small amount of system noise. So it's not exactly in a straight line, but there's some small variations given by this noise term here. And then at time seven, a maneuver kicks in. So UK might be zero, 
up until seven, and at k equals seven, uk might be the value such that a right-hand turn maneuver happens. So this is what we're dealing with with maneuvering targets. And you probably think that um, it mightn't be too hard if you didn't have any maneuvers at all. What you'd be tr probably trying to do is predict where you're going to be going next. And if there were no maneuvers, then it would look like that would be a fairly easy task to do. The challenge is going to come when there are maneuvers. So let's look at that in more detail. So let's think about what the radar sees, these YKs. It doesn't see these black dots, it only sees measured versions. So for example, at time one, it might be that the measured, version, the measured location, this value of Y here, might be offset from the true one. There's noise, of course, and the scaling. Let's look, think for here as if the scaling H equaled one, for example. Uh, then there's noise that projects you over to here. This might be the first measurement of the first radar scan. Let's say the measurement from the second radar scan was over here, maybe the second one. Uh, let's say the third measurement, again, they're noisy. Let's say the third measurement was over here. Then what we could see is that if we didn't include the filtering and this model here, if all we did to estimate the location was to simply look at the locations where our measurements are, then we would have a path where we would think that our uh, our target had gone on this path here. So it would be quite a noisy looking path if we didn't have this model and we, all we did was to take the measurements. Then we would think that our path was quite a, uh, a strange path with lots of uh, turns and sharp turns. Let's say the fourth measurement was here, for example, and so on. And now I've shown some other measurements all the way up to 10. I've drawn in the path that would be the estimate of the location if we only looked at the measurements up to measurement seven. Of course, I think you can see that we really do need to use this state space equation and to smooth this out and do some tracking, some smoothing, some filtering, some tracking. And one way to do that is to use a moving average filter. So for example, if we did take a moving average, then we would end up with a line that goes up through the middle of these measurements. Don't forget the green is all the radar can see, it's all it can measure. And if we had this, we would probably be predicting that the next location would be somewhere up the top up here. So location eight would be somewhere up here if all we had was these green measurements and we were smoothing them out. And so now I've drawn in, in red, an example of what that smoothed estimate might be. And one way to do this is to use the Kalman filter. And for details about the Kalman filter, check out the description below this video where you'll find a link to a video about the Kalman filter. You'll also find a web page which has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. So let's now think about what we're going to do to handle the maneuvers and to estimate when the target maneuvers. And of course, for maneuvering targets, we don't know when they're going to maneuver. That's the whole challenge. So one thing we can do is to model this as a random process. And in that case, we can group it together with the noise in the system noise. And we can, in our filter, we can run our filter with a larger system noise. And so that's something that we can do in the Kalman filter. That would be the first approach. And that would mean that you would take less notice of the prediction coming from the system equation, and you would take more notice of the update which comes from the measurement. So instead of estimating that the next position would be up here, we would now take a lot of notice of this next measurement at time eight, and we would be, uh, the filter would be giving a much greater weighting to that, and it would pred be predicting that the next location would be somewhere over here. Okay, so that's one approach. This is the one of the things we're wanting to do. We're wanting to put more emphasis on the measurements, but it will always be delayed. So another thing we could do is to try to actually run a separate algorithm which tries to detect the onset of maneuvers. And this lines with this kind of modeling here. So in this approach, we run parallel filters for different maneuvering functions. So we can assume that they are um, separated piecewise type functions 
And for example, in a straight line model, a U1 would be zero for all time. A right hand turn model would have a certain characteristic U2. A left hand turn would have a U3. A speeding up model would have a different U4 and so on. And so we can run separate estimators, one for each of these maneuvering models. And then we can be making a judgment about which one we think is the one that matches best with the measurements. So this is a multi-model tracking algorithm. That would be a second approach. A third approach would be to actually model the entire system without the maneuvers, but where there's an underlying Markov state. And that Markov state determines the maneuvering characteristics. So this is another approach to it where you don't include the maneuver explicitly, but you estimate an underlying Markov chain and you re-estimate the F matrix and the variance of the noise. So this is a third approach to handling maneuvering targets. Another thing to do is to potentially hold off on your decision. So instead of each time you get a measurement updating your position estimate, uh, instead of that, you can take multiple measurements into the future and then decide at a time which is before the most recent measurement. And this is called smoothing or delayed decision. And I think you can see in this case, if we were at seven and we had seen that eight and nine were over here and 10 was over there, certainly we would be uh, making a decision to move eight much further down, uh, potentially over to here. Uh, if we had that approach with the smoothing. The, of course, the downside to that is you're waiting for future scans. So there will be a delay between the decision making and therefore you may uh, suffer by not being able to react fast enough uh, to any, any of these actual maneuvers. So your estimate might be good, but it's coming in delayed. And another one I wanted to mention is the particle filtering approach. So in particle filtering, you don't have, you're not running separate models for different maneuvers, but you're running multiple estimates of where the location is. So instead of just having one estimate and having one red line up here, you run multiple estimates going up here in a particle filter mode. And each one of those estimates is slightly different. They are sampled according to particle filtering. And you then have a range of estimates. And some of them will be matching up more closely with the measurements than others. Then there's a process of pruning the poor estimates and adding to the good estimates and having essentially a cloud of prediction locations going forward. And so that's another approach with particle filtering. So if this video has given you more insights into radar tracking with maneuvering targets, uh, give it a thumbs up, it helps others to find the video. Check out the description below where you'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.